The con man just keeps cooking. I wasn't even planning on talking about another free agent signing here. I was about to hop on and talk more about this Kenny Pickett trade, but Omar just struck another deal. It's funny. One of you guys in the uh, comments for the last video, I think you said Kevin Colbert was a sea bass. The con artist is a fucking shark. You're going to get no disagreements from me here. Omar Khan ain't messing around. But we just signed uh, wide receiver Van Jefferson to a one-year deal. It's like 1.25 million. It's it's basically like a vet minimum contract. Not really a splash move. Not a flashy move. There's nothing wrong with it though. Uh, vet receiver adds depth. My expectations aren't that high. I expect him to be competing right now as it stands for wide receiver three with Calvin Austin. Although we don't have Deontay Johnson anymore, so. We just have Pickens, Austin, and Van Jefferson. So right now it's between Van Jefferson and Calvin Austin for wide receiver two. But I think as the offseason plays out, his highest upside or his highest ceiling is wide receiver three, but most likely he'll be wide receiver four, wide receiver five. He had one pretty good year with the Rams back in 2020 at 800 yards with them, but eventually got traded from the Rams to the Falcons. Didn't do much with the Falcons over these last couple of years. Uh, has been hurt, so we'll see if he could uh, reclaim any of that mojo he had with the Rams in 2020. I'm not expecting 800 yards. I don't, yeah, I, I just don't. 800 yards from Van Jefferson right now in 2024. Uh, if you're relying on that, I think your offense is in a bad spot. But if we could get three, 400 yards, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to that at all. He, he's somewhat fast. I don't know if he does special teams or any returns or anything like that. But for the vet men, you're getting a guy who has done it in the league before. I'll say that. Nothing wrong with it. He's a name. I think you guys recognize the name, right? Van Jefferson. Like He had a little stint with the Rams there. He might have even been like fantasy football viable for a minute, but never really parlayed that into anything since then. But we'll see. We'll see. Nothing wrong with the uh, signing. But let's get back to more Kenny Pickett talk, more Kenny Pickett trade talk. Now, from what I've gathered over the last few hours after this trade became official, is that this just wasn't going to be a good fit anymore. This wasn't a good match. It, it wasn't going to work. Because I think you had a mutual... I don't know the exact right word. A mutual distrust, a mutual like resentment or like a mutual side eye or awkwardness going on between the two parties of the Steelers organization and Kenny Pickett because you're seeing reports, you're seeing a lot of things thrown out there right now from both perspectives. From the Steelers side, they're saying what led to the trade was how Kenny Pickett handled this Russell Wilson signing. They don't think he handled this properly. But it also even dates back to week 17 whenever the Steelers said they're going to be going with Mason Rudolph as the starter and the rumor was Kenny Pickett refused to be the backup. They also didn't appreciate that either. And then Pickett's side of things, they're saying that they weren't trying to flee from competition. Uh, they weren't trying to have everything be their way, but they didn't like the mixed messages being sent. And I guess you could even start that back to week 17, right? When Mason got declared the starter, Pickett's probably thinking to himself, like, listen, man, like, I got hurt. We were at 7-4. and four. We played a game and a half without Matt Canada. Things were looking good. And then one game with Mason Rudolph, and I lost my job. What's the deal? Like, I thought once I got healthy, I was going to be back to being the starter. But that was never the case. The Steelers wanted to continue with Mason. I thought that was the right decision because that was the best the offense has looked over the last two years. And... I don't think it was a coincidence. It was because Mason was at quarterback for that game. He balled out. He played really good. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, you could also say he didn't like the messages being sent this offseason either. Like we're talking about last season, the, the end of last season and what went on there. But also just this offseason where organizations saying – we have full faith in Pickett. We, we have a lot of confidence in Pickett, but there will be competition. Kenny understands that. He's had conversations with Tomlin. They go their separate ways. And now free agency starts up. And we end up signing Russell Wilson. 
there's some communication to Kenny Pickett that, hey, we're bringing in Russell Wilson. It's going to be a competition. But then shortly after that, and this just came out today, there would be a competition, but we're going to give Russ the ones in OTAs. He's going to start off with the ones. He's going to have the inside track for the job. So I don't think Pickett liked that um, and just said, you know what? Let's just call it. Let's stop acting and pretending like this is going to be Russ's job. I uh, don't like how things have been handled over the last four or five months with me and being your quarterback. So, yeah, that's where it's at. That, that's where it was left at. I think both sides have their case. Both sides have their reasoning. Both sides can be justified in all this because the Steelers are thinking to themselves like, man, we told you we're going to bring in competition. And Russell Wilson was the best option for us. We're just flat out right trying to win games. And if anything, we're probably doing Kenny a service. We're doing you a service by at least calling it a competition. Because I think we would also be justified in just signing Russ and saying you're QB1. Because Kenny did leave the door open with his play in 2023. I said that. I don't think his poor play was all on him. You had Matt Canada. You had a bad O-line out there. You, you had several things going on. He was hurt. But he left the door open. Left the door open to question his viability as the Steelers QB1. Not only for 2023, because I told you, Mason's got to finish this season. This is the best our offense has looked in how long? Keep rolling with Mason. But now heading into the offseason, it's the same thing. Like, you left the door open for competition, and that's fine. He probably wasn't expecting Russell Wilson to be the competition, though, or just for everything to play out like it did. But I also get Pickett's side of things. It's like, man, I just need a fresh start. Like, this this ain't it. I was drafted here to be the guy. I drafted first round. I have been the guy over the last couple years. It didn't play out exactly how I would have liked, but I don't know if I had the best coordinator. I don't know if I had the best situation on offense to flourish here and then in a way maybe I get scapegoated I just need a fresh start I, I don't want to sit here and act like everything's cool this was my job I got my job stolen from me in this place I just need to go somewhere else I need a fresh start so I get both sides I can get both sides completely yeah but that's that uh Another angle we could talk about with this pick a trade is what's next with the quarterback room. Because right now we only have Russell Wilson. We literally don't have one quarterback that was on the roster last year. Mitch Mason or Kenny. We literally don't have one quarterback. That's crazy. But yeah, all we have is Russ now. So you know how I was saying I was like against the Justin Fields trade just a week ago well new information i would be all for a justin fields trade all the reasons why it would have made sense for the steelers to keep kenny instead of trading him to the eagles are all the reasons why having justin fields as a backup makes a ton of sense and when i'm talking about the steelers keeping pickett as a backup that is if pickett wanted to stay here obviously with pickett not wanting to be here then it's just like bro you got to move on like you can't have that around your organization, around your locker room. So, uh, Fields would bring all those same elements of just having a young quarterback sitting behind Russell Wilson, a guy that can learn from a Hall of Famer just being there. It's a, a safety valve in case the Russ experiment goes poorly. But also just to have a guy around uh whenever you're looking into next offseason too now the weird thing with justin fields is kenny you had him under contract for the next two two years three years if you wanted to pick up the fifth year option with fields you got to trade a pick for him and then you got to make a decision on if he's only going to be a one-year rental or you're going to pick up the fifth year option now could you guys tell me if I'm wrong. Could he sign? No, I don't think he can. Could he sign an extension if they don't pick up the fifth-year option? I don't think they can. I think he, it's his right to become a free agent if you don't pick up the fifth-year option. Now, you could hold out. Yeah, like dudes have hold, held out 
into year three, into year four, depending on how good they've played and them wanting an extension. But I guess you could. I guess you could then. You could technically. If the Steelers wanted to give Fields like a little two-year deal that's in between what he's getting now and what the fifth-year option would be, they could do that, I guess. But right now, it would either be you have Fields, you're trading a pick for Fields for one year, or you're trading a pick for Fields and then you're picking up this fifth-year option sight unseen, which is like over $20 million bucks. And Fields is supposed to only be your backup this year. So if all things go right, you don't see Fields at all. Uh, and you're not going to be wanting to pay him $20 million, uh for 2025. You're not going to want to do that. So it's a, it's a dicey situation with the contracts and the compensation and stuff. But if you just want a young guy with upside, with talent, being here, who has played in the league, I don't think he's that amazing. I don't think he's been that amazing up to this point. But he's got talent, has proven at least, if if we're just talking about him being the backup this year, we need to win a game or two. I think we can get out of a stadium with Justin Fields. But has that upside of maybe being a long-term solution for you. Who knows what could happen? Like, we are in this weird spot. Like, anything can happen. I think the Steelers could be awesome with Russ this year. I think there's a lot of reasons why this is a great fit. But there is a case things may not work out. Now, what are the percentages of each scenario happening? I don't know. I'm not trying to have that conversation right now. That's for a different day. But just to have some security back there. And in Fields' case, and in Pickett's case, if he was going to stay here, there's upside. There's your potential like long-term solution sitting there, too, if Wilson doesn't work out. Now, if Wilson works out, you're signing him to an extension. Maybe you're rolling with him for the next three, four years. Like He's the answer for you. But yeah, I would be all for trading for Justin Fields. Now, it depends on the compensation a little bit. I don't think his market is as hot as what it was or what people were talking about it was uh, a few weeks ago. Like, does a fourth get it done? Maybe we trade that fourth that we just got in this Kenny Pickett trade. A fourth, and I wouldn't pick up the fifth-year option. Just have Fields sit there as the backup. You're, you're only paying Russ a million bucks. I think you could afford whatever Fields' cap hit is right now. And would Fields be open for something like this? I don't know. Maybe. I don't think his market's too hot. I'm going to say it again. I don't think his market's too hot. Like, anywhere he goes, he's probably just going to be competing. Like, if you're the Vikings, they just signed Sam Darnold. The Raiders, they just signed Gardner Minshew. How much are you willing to give up for a Fields to come in and compete with either of those QBs? When you also got the draft coming up and you very well could draft one of these rookies like a J.J. McCarthy, a Penix, or a Bo Nix. So fourth might get it done for Fields, man. A fourth. Because I don't think he goes to a scenario where he's going to be the bona fide starter at this point. Best case scenario would be a competition. I don't know what type of inside track he would have on that competition. But then the most likely scenario is him being a backup. And what better backup spot to be in than sit behind like a Russell Wilson or sitting behind a Hall of Famer, just in general, and being in a Steelers organization. That's a pretty damn good organization, right? I think we can agree on that. Um, but yeah, I think you, you got to bring in guys. You, you got to bring in uh, some quarterbacks here. There's no doubt. Uh, probably draft a dude. I, I don't want to draft a guy early. I don't. I would actually rather trade for Justin Fields than draft the guy early. I would try to get Fields for like a fourth or something, man. If we could get something that's worse than a third-round pick for Fields, I think that would be so much better than trying to draft a guy. Like in our scenario, that would make a ton of sense for us. Now in like the Vikings, the Raiders scenario, drafting a dude makes more sense because you get him on the rookie contract. And you don't have a Russell. You have a Sam Darn. You got a little bit more uncertainty at that quarterback position. We got a Russell Wilson here. If all things go right, Russell Wilson's starting. Whereas with the Vikings, the Raiders, some of these other teams, uh, yeah, you don't know who's going to be starting day one. Whoever you draft, you want to be the starter. But you're in like a whole different mindset that what than what the Steelers are right now. Drafting a rookie quarterback, having a guy like Darnold in the building like you're I don't I don't think you have that same like 
Super Bowl contending mentality that the Steelers are at right now with some of the moves that we're making and having Russ in the building. Uh, other names, oh, man, I don't even know who's available. Okay, you got Ryan Tannehill, Teddy Bridgewater, Tyler Huntley, Joshua Dobbs, Carson Wentz. Yeah, I mean, any of those names. If you don't trade for fields, uh, yeah, a Tannehill, obviously familiar with Arthur Smith. That would make sense. That would probably make, that might actually make the most sense. Dobbs, Carson Wentz. Yeah, any of those guys wouldn't be bad. Even like Huntley wouldn't be terrible either. Yeah, I think that's what you're looking at at free agency right now. And then in the draft, just don't pick one of those guys early. I think it would be a waste. Bring in a dude that's going to have impact as soon as they get here. Go O-line, O-line at this point, man. Go center. Go right tackle. Yeah, because, I mean, that's that's really all we need right now. We got the safety in here. Could we use another inside linebacker? I know I brought up Isaiah Simmons yesterday, but you could do that in free agency. Probably on the cheap, too. Another corner. But I ain't stressing on that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we need receiver. Who am I kidding? We need receiver. We did sign Van Jefferson. Going back to the beginning of the video, we, we signed Van Jefferson, but he's not the guy you're going to be relying on here. Yeah, uh... Well, we'll see what we do with Boyd. But, man, even if we sign Boyd, we got to get another dude. We got to get, like, a Mike Williams. We got to get maybe one of these uh, top receivers in the draft. So forget what I'm saying about O-line, O-line. We got to see how the rest of this free agency plays out. But those are just some additional thoughts I had about the picket trade, what it means for our quarterback room right now, and then also, uh, yeah, I guess I talked about the Van Jefferson signing at the beginning. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Stay chilling. Uh, I probably won't have a video for you tomorrow. That's why I wanted to record tonight. I'm going to be out on the golf course. So I probably won't be back till Sunday at the earliest. But uh, unless something crazy happens, who knows? Maybe I'll get home from the golf course and we'll, we'll have signed Tyler Boyd and Mike Williams. Then I'll have to make a video. But other than that, uh, stay chilling. Peace.